Do you find yourself nodding off or being particularly frustrated with a project or task that you have to do but can't figure out how to do it? Or do you find yourself slipping into dreamland when you should be focusing on getting your report out? Or are you slipping into a funk at 2 p.m. on Tuesday but you need to buckle down because this project needs to launch by the end of the day. Well, never fear, I have a few productivity slash concentration tips for you to make sure that the steam keeps on going, you can make it through the end of the day and make it through another work week. I worked in corporate for years and there were many times where I just wanted to throw in the towel because I just couldn't get my head to stay in the game and keep on going. These are actions that you can take to concentrate better, but if you want tips on, for example, how to organize your work to be more productive throughout the day, comment below and let me know if that's something that I can help you with in the near future. These tips will probably work best for those who only manage maybe one or two people or are at a lower level. If you manage more people than that, I think you're going to need different coping mechanisms or stress relievers. Okay y'all, let's get productive. On to the first tip. Tip number one, get up, head to the kitchen, and make yourself a cup of coffee or tea, whatever you prefer. Whenever I get up, walk away from my computer for a bit and do another activity that's more mindless and gets me out of that deep thinking mode. My mind kind of starts to drift and I'm more creative and resourceful in the ways that I think about the problem or the task I'm trying to complete and I'm open to different ways to solve it instead of just being stuck in one particular mode. And who knows, if you get up and go to the kitchen, you might bump into someone that could help you solve a particularly difficult problem or who you can chat with for a little bit to get your mind off of it so that you can get back and hit the ground running again. Drinking your choice beverage helps recharge your mind so you can regain the energy you lost trying to work on your project or task or whatever you need to get done. Tip number two, grab your laptop and go outside. So this works well if you have a patio or balcony at your office or if you don't have any of those extra perks, I would head to the nearest coffee shop. But even the act of walking with your laptop, getting your mind out of the workflow helps to change up the ideas flowing through your head. And oftentimes I come up with a new solution to the problem, just walking out the door and plopping myself down with the laptop. Honestly, I think getting a breath of fresh air is so understated. Where I used to work, we had a little outdoor balcony attached to one of the floors. And I went outside when I was working on a repetitive task that was honestly kind of boring me to sleep. I was working with spreadsheets and being out in the sun just helped re-energize me and made me more present. Even though I was still doing spreadsheets, it was a change of scenery. It made me feel like I was doing something a little bit different even though I just changed the environment versus the task that I was doing. I think if you sit for hours and hours on end at the same place, you can go crazy. If you really just can't get out, I would try to book or just find a small meeting space for one or two people where you can close the door and work from there. So not only maybe you can avoid some conversations if you're really trying to hunker down and concentrate on getting work done, but you can also get that change of scenery even without necessarily the breath of fresh air. This will help you feel like you're changing up things too. As a part B to this getting out with your laptop tip, it might sound counterintuitive to stay stop working and step out of your work for a little bit, but trust me, it really helps clear your mind and even though immediately you might think, okay, I'm wasting a little bit of time, if you just take at least five to 15 minutes doing work somewhere else, getting out of the groove of the regular place that you work, it'll refresh your mind and you will be a lot more productive for the next few hours instead of just waffling on a problem and being just semi-productive for maybe another hour before needing to get up anyway because you just can't sit still and look at this problem for the hundredth time. 
So take that extra few minutes so that you can be productive for the next few hours instead of maybe holding on for another hour and concentrating only in fragments instead of fully on the task at hand. It's also so important to try to regulate your temperature as best as you can. Now I know the office temperature is usually set to be at least lower than I'm comfortable with. I was always cold at the office, even in the summertime, they would crank up the AC. In the winter, I always felt like the heater could be on higher. You can bring a blanket to work, you can wear a blanket scarf, or wear fuzzier socks. As part of the series, I just published a video where I talk about ways, style tips, that will help you dress appropriately and warmly for your workplace if it's a little too chilly for you. But when you feel that you're the right temperature for your body, and I always feel like the right temperature is actually a little bit colder than where you're comfortable at. I think if it's too warm, you end up feeling kind of woozy and you can't concentrate either. At least that's how I feel. Actually comment below and let me know if your head ends up feeling very floaty and you can't do any complicated problem solving because of that when it's too hot. But anyways, keeping the right temperature helps to make sure that your mind is focused on what it needs to do instead of keeping yourself warm or cold wherever you are. Okay, next tip, pop on some headphones and listen to some non-distracting ambient music. So if you're looking for a playlist or a list of songs, I would select one where the songs don't have lyrics or words because then you might just start focusing on the words, the meaning, and the song instead of actually doing your work. And doing this really helps put you in a sphere of concentration. It's almost like your head goes to an alternate plane where you don't feel like you're in the office. And again, you'll have different ideas and ways to work that will surface instead of just feeling like, okay, you're at the same place and, and you're feeling kind of bored and stuck because it's the same old, same old. Music can have a way of transporting you to what feels like another place, at least in your headspace, so that new ideas will flow out. Lately, I've been listening to the Chilled Cow channel on YouTube and it plays lo-fi, chill, hoppy type music. Check it out. Also, the background of the channel, it's just this girl studying and she looks like she's somewhere in Europe and she has this orange tabby cat sitting on the window looking outside, its tail is wagging. It's just a very comforting channel. As the music plays, it helps me visualize ideas in my head as well. And the music helps put me in a comforting and even creative zone. If you're doing the same action over and over again and you don't have to take calls, for example, because obviously, you know, if you're taking customer calls, at work, you can't listen to music, but I think if you do listen to music, it helps you pass the time when you feel like you can start dozing off because you press the return and the space bar for the 77th time already. <laughs> I'm joking, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Lastly, and I'm saving the best for last, set a small goal to motivate you to, to finish the task or project on hand. So I always feel that sometimes no matter what, you really just can't concentrate and no amount of ambient music or fresh air will get you through it. But when I make a mental note of a reward that I'll give myself once I finish something that's daunting, scary, stressful, or frustrating, it helps push me through it a lot of the time. So for example, and it's going to be different for you, because obviously all our motivations are different. I love to snack. I'll often say, okay, once you tackle this task, you can get a piece of chocolate or have a dessert after that. And so for my lunch, I won't eat you know, a sweet that I might have brought for myself and save that for after I'm done with the project. So not only will it kind of help push you along and motivate you towards your goal, but the goal is so much sweeter because you worked for it. Other ways to treat yourself, maybe if you finish a big project in the daytime after work, 
you'll treat yourself to a more sweet coffee, or you'll allow yourself to binge watch a series for three episodes later on, or you'll treat yourself to a bubble bath later. Whatever makes you feel good and something that you can do later on during that day. So I wouldn't recommend setting goals for the next day because I feel like those are too far off for them to really make an impact on your work today, usually, unless you know you operate that way. So I like to make sure that the small rewards I give myself are the same day and in a few hours. So it also kind of puts me on kind of an artificial time crunch to get it done. So I'm less likely to procrastinate and leave it until tomorrow and really actually feel even more stressed out because I didn't get it done as soon as possible. Another reward could also be you're not going to chit chat with your coworkers until the task is done. So. If you're a more social person, that could be a motivating factor. And the reward doesn't even have to be until you finish the project or task because obviously we know some projects can go on for weeks or months. It could also just be once you get to a major checkpoint, you'll reward yourself with something. But you know, work can be so mundane that sometimes you just need a little joy in your life to get you through it. I'm going to stop here because I could go on and on. If you're interested, Comment below, give this video a like to let me know if a follow-up video makes sense on more productivity tips. There will just be some days that you just can't focus, that work is just really getting ahead of you and you just can't get into it. And I think you just need to forgive yourself sometimes. You can't always be on it, but just do the best that you can and there's always tomorrow you can try again. And for those days that you just really feel like your head is in the clouds and you can't get out of it, I would try to do tasks that require less maybe critical thinking if you're in a workplace that allows you to kind of shift around your projects. But if not, really the best way I feel like to get back on track is just to take a few minutes and not think about the project so that you can reset your mind and hopefully that will help carry you there. Anyways, I hope this video was useful and I hope wherever you work, you're having a wonderful, productive day. You can concentrate and just know you can do it whatever you need to do. See you next time. Bye.